Let's go ahead and apply our knowledge to a little bit more complicated of an example. In this case, I'm going to be interested in asking the question, what's the average difference of high school and middle school hydration? What's the average hydration difference between high schoolers and middle schoolers? Kind of an interesting question. And you know, in truth, I'm not necessarily sure who would be more hydrated. Um, but anyways, so this would be the question of interest. So what would we want to do if we had all the money and time in the world? So we would look at the population of high schoolers, which I will call the high pop. We would compute the hydration of this, so in which case we get h. And we're going to go ahead and get something like theta sub h, so the average hydration of high schoolers, basically. We would go ahead and we do the exact same thing for middle school. So we go ahead and go to mid school, mid school. So we get the mid pop. We go ahead, we take H of the mid pop. So we take the hydration of the mid pop and we get something that would be theta sub M. So the, the middle school hydration. And what we do is we go ahead and subtract them. And this would be the difference. This right here would be exactly what we're looking for. Now we can't do this uh, because we'd have to uh, survey literally all the high schoolers necessarily in the country or in our district or something like that, as well as all the middle schoolers. So what do we do instead? So in this case, we take samples. So from the high school, we can go ahead and we can take a sample. Let's say we talk to 20 people. So n equals 20 people. We go ahead and we get a sample. And we go ahead and we do the exact same thing in middle school. So from the middle school population, we get a sample. And the cool thing here is the sample sizes don't need to be the same. So I'll go say m equals 23. So we like middle schoolers more, so we get more middle schoolers into our sample. Now, based on the plug-in principle, you would know that we can go ahead and take this sample, apply the hydration to it, and go to a good estimate of what the middle school hydration would be, which we call theta hat sub m. The nice thing is we can also do this with the other sample from high school. So we go ahead, apply hydration to it, and go to a good estimate of what the average hydration for high schoolers is. And we could once again subtract. And voila, we get a good estimate for what the average distance or for the average difference between high schoolers and middle schoolers hydration is. Now, I think you know where we're going next. So let's say we weren't just interested in a point estimate. Let's say we're interested in a confidence interval. What would we do? Well, you probably know. So from our sample over here, we go ahead and take lots of bootstrap samples. So in this case, our sample size would be n equals 20, just like we, saw, just like we sampled from the high school population. This would give us bootstrap samples. On the middle school side, we would do the exact same thing. We would take this sample. In this case, m would equal, the sample size would equal 23, just like we sampled from the middle school population to get lots and lots of bootstrap samples from middle school. Bootstrap samples from middle school. The cool thing here is that we would have the exact same number of bootstrap samples. So we'd have n bootstrap samples here, and then in bootstrap samples here. And for each bootstrap sample, we would apply hydration. We go ahead, get hydration. In this case, we get theta hat star sub m, the bootstrap sample estimate of middle school hydration. On this side, we go ahead and we get theta hat star sub h, the bootstrap estimate of hydration of uh, high schoolers. Now, to figure out what the difference is, we do something fairly simple. We take the difference. And we do this lots and lots and lots of times. This will give us the sampling distribution we're interested in. And from this sampling distribution, we can compute the confidence interval. OK? So this should be really cool, right? Uh, one, we use a lot more colors than we did normally. But two, this is only the application of the plug-in principle once again. So let's review. So first, we were interested in this value up here. We were interested in this truth value as in what is the average high school population's hydration minus the average middle school population's hydration. And in order to estimate it, we used the plug-in principle. Now the next cool thing was we were interested in knowing what the confidence interval was. And to get the confidence interval, we were interested in doing these two steps up here. How do we do these two steps up here? The cool thing is we basically use the plug-in principle to emulate those two steps up there by doing these two steps down here. So once again, instead of taking lots and lots of samples from high school in order to get a sampling distribution, we take lots and lots of samples from the sample. And we do the exact same thing with the middle schoolers. 
So in the same way that we sample from the original population and apply the function to the original population, we do the exact same thing on our bootstrap samples. So it's a double application of the plug-in principle, and it should be fairly concrete to you now.